This is a loosely coupled show with James Hickey and Derek Martin. If you're new to this channel, we chat about software architecture and design. Make sure to subscribe to get all our latest episodes. So Reed Evans, by the way, um, when I, I tweeted about, like he said, hey, we should talk about this. We should definitely talk to Reed. Um, so I've met Reed in person a few times at some conferences. Okay. And it really just started from Twitter. And when I went to, like this goes back probably f f four or five years. He had a, he made me start thinking differently. He had a talk way back when, like, say, four or five years ago about um, just some stuff that you do in C Sharp that is, like, kind of like I was talking about. It's like, and then this is the, so I'll make this quick so we can actually record something else. Oh, is, oh we can record this okay. if you want. And <laughs> then we can have them on after. Yeah, it was like when I was mentioning about, like, being yeah. in a situation that you, sh like, you're trying to solve a problem to a situation that you shouldn't even be in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my analogy when I was talking to some people this morning about it, which is is bad, but I'm just going to use it anyways because it was top of mind. I was thinking about this last night. And it, it, Reed made me start thinking about this was like if, if you're talking about like, hey, I, I got to walk like there's kind of like farm field near me. I'm like if I got to get to the road, I want to take a shortcut through the farm field and there's it's full of mud and I'm just wearing my tennis shoes. You know what I mean, and then I walk through the mud and it's like a pain in the ass. And then the next time I'm like, you know what? I'm going to like wear boots this time. Right. And then you're like, oh, that's a pain in the ass. So then I like come up with so much contraption, right? So my boots don't come off. <laughs> and I keep on coming up with these solutions that it's like, just don't walk through the effing mud. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like stop walking through the mud. Like you're, you're, you're causing yourself all this grief that you're trying to cause, like you're creating solutions for that you have no business creating but you're just so used to doing it that you yeah. don't even realize that there's like another way or another path or something you could be doing entirely different uh and that's what i feel like in code a lot of times and some of the stuff i've been posting on uh, the last couple months and i got some hate from it like not a lot but like some negative comments that i can appreciate people's um like dis like just disregard for what I was trying to explain. Um, it, primarily it was around exceptions and throwing exceptions and different ways of doing it. And, yeah. or like even with null, for example. Those with the option. Yeah. Stuff. Like just using option either a bunch of just things that would, it just, it, I despise the fact of have like, I really, really despise the idea of, that you should just know how to do stuff that you the developer is let like the type system doesn't help the, dev the developer like I, I feel like it should be guiding you down a path a success <laughs> rather than oh remember to do that and i'll check remember to write that yeah. try catch which you don't have to do yeah. um, and that was kind of my point of like this railroad of you're going this way you're going this way and with using something like option or either like you're forced down the path to deal with it yeah now you could argue okay well the nullable reference types now sure but not entirely um because you can still get like i i should have posted something on how i ran into it the other day it was a nightmare but it just it's so much more helpful to be getting pushed down a path where you're forced to think about like you're forced to deal with stuff rather than having to realize it. Yeah. Right. Like somebody used to tell me, which I totally agree with is like the, the attitude of like, Oh, I should just try harder to remember that next time. It's like, no, it, that that's not, that's, that's so like try harder. is such a dumb, like you don't think I'm trying, <laughs> you know what i mean like i'm out yeah i'm just writing crap as quickly as i can like i guess that's possible but i feel like it should be putting you down the pit of success not the well got this loaded gun and we just hope you don't shoot yourself in the foot with it and you should yeah. be aware that it's loaded it's like no it's like i just find that absurd but people clearly from some of the comments i got like living in the wild west because that's what it feels like to me a lot of times in, in most languages basically i mean arguably i won't get on the whole functional rant 
because I'm not there. But I feel like if I were to make that leap, that's probably where I'm supposed to be heading because everything I do now, seemingly, <laughs> that's the answer. Or I'm trying to do it in a half-assed way. Or not a half ass, but like I'm trying to do it in C Sharp where it's like, okay, Derek, enough's enough. Just just start using F Sharp. Yeah. Well, that's kind of like the common little discussion we had on Twitter there, which kind of triggered sort of triggered what we're talking about now. Um, and my, my intent there was just to like throw out an idea more like to make people think about. Yeah. So I'll, I guess the, I'll bring it up right now and your, okay. your original tweet was, but you can yeah. paraphrase it right now. I'll put it on the screen. Yeah. It was basically like, well, if you have a Boolean somewhere, just replace it with an enum, I think, and see what happens. Right. Just whatever, just throwing that around. And then uh, I think, to today or yes yesterday or today maybe last night somebody asked on that thread like oh can you give an actual example like what are you <laughs> what are you actually talking about right and it was my intent was just just to be kind of like just try this see what happens right but like the example i gave there is if you're for example if you have a method to authenticate a user um normally you would just return a true or a false Yes, it's authenticated or false. No, you didn't pass. Um, so instead of that, if you return an enum, then you can be more specific, right? So you'd be like uh, credentials failed, or you could do uh, fraud detected, so you're locked out, or you could do like uh, yes, you're authenticated, or you could do uh, whatever, right? So it's just like you can you have more flexibility, you can be very specific in what happened in that case. That's that's just one example. But your comment was, well, if, if like, I can see this, if you are passing in an enum as like a function param or a method parameter, instead of a Boolean, like that's a big code smell, passing in a Boolean as a flag to be like, do this method a little differently if it's true or false. Or if you pass in an enum, it might be like, well, now you have like 10 different ways that this function is 10 different things that it's doing, which is a code smell uh, also, right? Um, and then, yeah, you get into like, okay, now you have to do like switch state statements on enums. And what if you what if you miss one of those that's what cases? My that's what my point was, is that if you're yeah. using it in some way, like say you're, say you're returning that, like it is your example, and then you need to deal with the results. You don't know. There's no way. At least I don't. We'll get Rita on here to maybe give us <laughs> a, uh, an example of it. But not that I know of. There's no way to guarantee um, that you are handling each result. Yeah. Right. So, and then if you just and have that's like, like default, a language, that's yeah. like a language issue with yeah. C sharp. And I want like if I'm getting back a result, I want to know that likely if you add a new one, that I'm handling it. And so if you're just if you're creating this API, right, and you add some new result to that e well, you add new um, item to that enum, and I was the one consuming it, well, like yeah. am I just not handling now a new use case that you, like or something that you're returning? Like I have no idea. Yeah. I mean, there was yeah. a Roslyn analyzer that I found um, that can tell you this, and that's cool. So, like, that's the cool thing about Roslyn and Roslyn analyzers. You can do all this stuff. So maybe that is the answer um, because it, it it's what I'm alluding to is that it's forcing you down a path that, he, that, that you have to deal with this. It's not... But now, but, like, now we're still talking about, like, kind of what you're talking about with, like, the mud... And now you you have this like fancy contraption, which I would say is the analyzer, which work like it works. Sure, it works, and it's maybe not so analogous to like walking in the mud with the with the rubber boots and the contraption. Um, but in a sense, it still is right. It's like a yeah. band aid on top of. Well, yeah, which, I mean, I guess, that's I just because you're using enums, I guess, and like they don't necessarily have the capabilities of what you're expecting. Um, you could do like I mean you could now now we can go down a different road right it's like well technically you could return like a a base type and then do pattern matching to check is it 
is it this kind of authenticated result or whatever you want to call it or is it this other type which i think the same issue stands right you c sharp doesn't enforce like uh i forget what the term is but like if you're exhaustive. pattern matching the type exhaustive pattern matching that's yeah. right whereas um, f sharp would does so it's like that is kind of the real for me like that seems to be that is the the fix like that's Pretty the much. proper fix yeah that's Just, what i was getting at ultimately yeah yeah so i, I mean that would be interesting like you said with the null the uh strict null thing nullable checks or, or whatever that's in the newer c sharp versions it'd be nice to have like an exhaustive pattern matching thing but but you know that wasn't in the language originally in f sharp it is like baked in right so yeah it's just that's where the whole thing everybody like you see this stuff on twitter it's like somebody posts something and then the reply from somebody that uses f sharp is like use f sharp <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then it's like well i yeah it's like i know that's the answer but what if what if i can't so what, well what do that, I do that's now? the problem right is that like <clears throat> that's yeah that's easily the argument is people be like well just use f sharp it's like well no that's not just easy like okay i have this existing product project that we work on that yeah you know what i mean and all of a sudden you're going to tell all the developers hey you gotta start learning how to do this and yeah. another uh, to to that end too and i think i've said this somewhat recently on here which i also was talking about this morning which just like learning something new or jumping to something new like if you start using a different platform or different language it's not like that's not it's not trivial, yeah. right? Yeah, there's learning curve and et cetera, but if you're not with somebody else on your team that understands it really, really well, what's the likelihood that you're gonna do anything even remotely close to correct? Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just, it's like just to try to tackle learning something new in a real world app that like, you're not doing on your own spare time or it's not costing you money. Somebody's paying for it. And you're doing this just like totally bl going in totally blind. It's like, what's, what's the likelihood that you're actually going to do anything that you're not going to regret <laughs> immediately once you <laughs> learn more in, in six months. Yeah. Right. So like for us, just like, ah, I'm yeah. just going to start using F sharp and I, I have nobody on the team that can guide the whole thing that knows it really well. It's like, well, good luck. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's, yeah, it's like a totally different paradigm of like thinking, mm -hmm. thinking about like how you program. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, personally, F sharp looks really, really nice, but I haven't really looked taken the the plunge yet. <laughs> That's a thing either. Like I've 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 done little samples. Seemingly every three months, I kind of jump into it, <laughs> and. Um, F Sharp for fun or profit is an awesome site to kind of get you going um, with just understanding. But again, I need something like full blown to get me involved in it. Yeah. Like I just, yeah. I can't, I can't, I mean, I could spend time. I have no problem spending the time uh, like creating, say like a little side project to really, to really learn it. Um, the only problem with that is that that pulls time from something else that I'm doing, which consists of this, YouTube, my blog, like, so something's got to give, right? Yeah. Which I just haven't been able to kind of pull that time away from. Yeah. Yeah, and there's, there's other people who might say like, well, programming language doesn't matter as much as these other higher level things. I disagree. And then it's, yeah, I, I think so. I think it, like, I think you yeah. can argue, argue like general purpose, say like, uh, is the, I mean, maybe productivity comes into it, how productive you are. Obviously the old adage there of like, oh, the best programming language to use is the one, you know, type thing, which I can agree with, but I, I, I don't think that's without saying that like and then there's the whole like oh right tool for the job which i think is like 
well, if you only have a hammer, guess what you're going to use? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, build up your toolbox so you have some clue about what tool does what. Yeah. Um, but if you don't have that tool, guess what you're using? Like, it's, that's just what it's going to be. Um, but yeah, I don't think like, I don't, I, yeah, I just, I'm getting more and more towards the idea that there's some languages, and I think C Sharp's one of them, that maybe just my mind's not there. I just, I find it too, Wild West isn't the right word. There's just a lot it's, you can it's do. It's like too flexible almost, right? Yeah, it's maybe it's just it's not opinionated enough on how you do things. Yeah. I, I, I can't put my finger on it. And I've been using it for forever, right? So it's like it I know like the back of my hand. Too. Well, it's like 20 years old now, pretty much. Yeah, I guess we're getting there. Almost, yeah. yeah. So it's, I don't know, it's just, I think I've been saying I need to make the jump to learn a functional language like really, really well. I think F-sharp's clearly the obvious choice because then I, there'll be some familiarity for me still yeah i think i don't know uh, but yeah i gotta do it sooner or later <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this episode of the loosely coupled show if you did please subscribe for more on software architecture and design